Oh my god, I swear! Ducky! Ducky! Where do you live? I'm actually coming to your house! I'm Ducky, where do you fucking live? I swear! You are such a pussy! Now, nah, reset! 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 So reset! 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 First of three! Nah! Let's go! Let's go again! Cool, sweet. Um, yeah, here we are again, and I've got a uh, Killer Instinct slash Tekken Seven player, good old Anu. What's up, man? Thanks, man. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good, bro. Good, bro. Um, so yeah, just give us the rundown about yourself, where you are, what you've been doing. Ah, uh, uh, so the name's Anu Hobson, but everyone knows me as good old Anu. I've uh, been playing Tekken for a little while now, maybe since the start of season one. And I've also been a day one Killer Instinct player since the lease as well. So those two main games are the ones that I, I play the most. Here's a question. Were you playing Killer Instinct um, because of COVID or were you jamming it well before then? Um, I had a little bit of a... I left KI for a little bit. I stopped putting a lot of time into it, like near the end of season three. And then during COVID, yeah, I decided I'll try and play it again, get back into it. And then... Ever since COVID, I've just got more and more addicted to the game, and I've, I've just to start like decided to start playing it again as much as I used to. So yeah, mm. and like when I asked you who you mained, and you said Gargos, Gargos is a mm. is a gargoyle. I'm guessing, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's weird because Killer Instinct is that game. It's a lot of creatures, machines, yeah, yeah, demons. Yeah. There's yeah. hardly any human human fighters. Like <laughs> how how would you describe what Killer Instinct is apart, like to separate it from other of the fighting games yeah it's definitely got like um a lot of character diversity is what i'll say um you know you've got the, you've got hisako who's the ghost girl and then you've got eagle who's the native american sort of archer guy you've got Fogel, who's the robot you've got gargos who's considered a, a gargoyle but in ki3 they actually decided to make him more of a god sort of thing a so god, he's actually considered okay. a god yeah well like when you when you told me gargos was your main the first mm -hmm. thing I thought of was gargoyles. You know that old kids. Um, <laughs> are, are you too young for that, or do you remember that show? I, I'm probably too young for that. I'm still only like I've just turned 21 this year, and yeah, I'm, I'm still probably too young yeah. for that. But I do know what you mean. It's just because like, like, it's gar like gargoyles. Like there's not many like gargoyle lore in 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 fighting games, I suppose. So I thought it was an mm. interesting character choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I um. I, I loved Gargos and uh, KI2 because I used to play that when I was a kid, just like muck around on it. And then it was cool seeing it again, but with its like revamped sort of godlike appearance that he has now. Yeah. Because so, yeah, his, yeah. his, his classic look um, wasn't at all intimidating. Like it's as good as these, <laughs> these animations here. Um, but how did, what was the take on the god aspect? Because he looks a lot more. Um, uh, yeah. malevolent i suppose yeah yeah yeah. i know what you mean um yeah uh, i'm not too sure like i know that one thing is definitely a size you compare him back to ki2 and he was really short he was really short and when you come to season uh ki3 the, the latest one out he's he, he's huge he's he's a bloody monster i think he's just a tad taller than arbiter and arbiter's actually quite a tall character too Yep. So the size is definitely one thing. The move set is another thing, and um, yeah, it's just his persona as well. When you hear him speak and talk, and when he throws a move out, you can hear he's he sounds deadly. You're like, <laughs> yeah, and his um his trait he can create voids and punch mm. you from a distance. He he is a zoner. I'm I'm assuming. Yeah, he's. He's he's one of those weird hybrid characters that Killer Instinct likes to do in their season two and season three sort of release characters. They 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 all have like a very weird sort of playstyle. So Gargos has his portal portal punches, which he can do like combos from like full screen. But he also has a command grab, which forces you to play kind of up close as well. So and that command grab is like one of his main go to tools when playing Gargos. I'd say more than his portal punches, but. It, it's yeah so you kind of want to have a good mix between portal punch combos and getting in close for that command grab sort of setup stuff because 
he does have the keep away tools, but he does also have the tools that are required to, uh, I would say, get close. He's got like what he's got like a psycho crusher move, which can cover, which can like cover a lot of distance. Yeah. Um, and then he's got that command grab, which can be very, very scary when he's up close. I would say he's more, he's way more deadly up close than he is from a distance. The portal punches are good, but um, the downside is they don't do a lot of damage. They're kind of there just to keep your opponent at bay, sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So. Like a dulcim tactic, I suppose. You're just kind of chipping away from a distance. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, in that, in that sense, what situation would you not want to be in if you're a Gagos player? Ooh. Um, okay, so one situation I hate being in is normally against a Thunder player. Thunder is another command grab heavy character. And um, I think from a personal perspective, I struggle against grapplers. They are like the bane of my existence when they are up close. Yeah. <laughs> like, that is scary. Even though I play like a grappler character in this game, if I versed another one, I hate being up close. I hate it. I yeah. cannot like stand. I would rather do portal punch combos and slowly chip away than try and contest a good thunder player because you can easily get destroyed. Um, another thing would be... Gargos's wake up options aren't the best as well. He doesn't have a lot of like good reversals. He has one, but like it's it's super unsafe. So similar to like a DP. Oh yeah. So you leave But that's about it. Yeah. yeah. You can't really spend a shadow meter to consider something safe and like uh I don't really know how to put it, but wake up options definitely not as yeah, definitely not as go to. So he can get hit hard by by characters that excel in sort of Okizemi sort of areas. Yeah. Well, let, let's let's bring it back, man. Tell us about how you got into the fighting game scene. Um, what was your very fighting games before even touching games like Killer Instinct? Uh, my very first fighting games. I remember having real faint memories when I was a kid, and I played a lot of uh, Mortal Kombat Trilogy on, I think it was my Nintendo 64. That was probably one of my first fighting games. I loved it, absolutely loved it. And then my dad got me a PlayStation 1, and we used to play a lot of Tekken 3, me and my brother. And then ever since Tekken 3 came out, I've been playing just Tekken religiously since 4, 5, 6, Tag 2, 7. Um, so Tekken, Tekken 3 and Mortal Kombat Trilogy were my first introductions into fighting games. And I've always just tried to be good at them. Yeah. And was it Yoshimitsu, like, at the very beginning? Or did you play other characters? Um, I played... Ooh, in the beginning, I I normally just played Jin and Tekken 3. Yeah, uh, Jin and Tekken 3. Um, and Tekken 4, they didn't really have a main. I was still kind of young and just playing the game sort of for fun. Same thing with Tekken 5. And then when it came to 6, I really liked Bob. I, <laughs> I thought it was cool because he was a spinny stuff. And, yeah. <laughs> and then when it came to Tag 2, uh, Tag 2 was like the game where I thought there's like a lot more to fighting games than what I thought. So I started to get in, I started to learn up things about like frame data, um, learning a lot about setups, matchup knowledge, sort of that, that sort of stuff as well. That's when I started to really learn. Like there's a lot more to fighting games than what I thought there was from a beginner perspective. Yeah. Well, I saw you at our nationals last year and I thought, hmm. oh yeah, there's another party Yoshimitsu. Okay. okay. Yeah. You know, we, we, we need more Yoshimitsus. Um, and, and you know, you're quite a big guy, but you're quite friendly. Um, yeah. yeah. And, you had some, and you have some good skill as well. Um, was that your first experience at a fighting game event? Yes. Yes, it was. Um, Southern Cross Up 2019 was my very first local and, it was something that I'll never regret. It was the most fun I've ever had in a long time. I've always said, like, it's always best to experience, like, a Rambats or something before, <laughs> something that big. But to have that as your first event. Yes. Um, that, that, yeah, it must imprint a special memory for you. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, man. Like, the whole journey was just unbelievable. Because when, like, growing up, maybe when I was, like, 13 and I started, I think I was either 13 or 14 when I started playing KI is when I started watching just offline events, but, like, of all fighting games. And when I'd see, like, the stream overlay and you see the two players at the bottom and, like, just everything going on, I just thought that was the coolest stuff ever. Like, I can't believe that people are out there. And I always used to think to myself, imagine if it was me on there. Mm. I'll probably never get there, but imagine if it was, man. That would be so cool. And but ever since I was, like, 13, I've always dreamed of, like, going 
to one of those. Yeah, things. you you did have a match on stream. I remember. I don't remember. Yes. Who, I, I can't recall <laughs> who you played against. But um, yeah, what was that? So like? Blackout. Oh, yeah, was... okay. Yeah, we so we, we both we both took the out there, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> so yeah, um, it says I I think it was the Friday they had like a warm up sort of session where you can just play with people and yeah have some friendly games. So that was the first time I went, and like my heart was pumping. Like I, ever since I was a kid, I dreamed of going to go into something like this, and now I'm here. My nerves were just through the roof. I didn't really know how to how to cope with it. I was shaking uncontrollably. My, my palms were like sweaty as, mm. and I was just, I was, I was so scared. It was unbelievable. And then the very next day I have one game and I managed to take that. And then the next, the next game I had was against blackout. And then the lady that was like telling everyone where to play, she told me I was going to be playing on stream. And yeah. then when she said that, I nearly had a heart attack. I was like, Oh yeah. my God, I have like, like this is something I've wanted to do for so long. Now it's here, and I'm I'm scared. I never considered <laughs> nerves. Like, yeah, and I know and, the person I'm going up against is an Evo player who's yeah. just crazy good. So it's, I was scared. <laughs> such a huge um, not like blackout knows Cornwallis's Yoshimitsu very well. So mm. obviously you went in there like trying to grasp the situation, and it's like oh shit, like yes. he actually knows Yoshi stuff, like. This may not be so good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah cause there was a few things he blocked that most people normally didn't, and he did. He was a lot patient too. He was really aware of flash, mm. and for me, that was something I wasn't used to. Like most, most of my flash stuff normally works on like an online sort of perspective, but against this fella, it was a bit harder to try and cheese him out with all the Yoshi gimmicks. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah. So you, you're <laughs> a trooper because you're a trooper because you you came out of Auckland. Like, where did you? Where were you bunking every night, or like, where were you bunking every uh, night? So the people I stayed with was actually I think you might know them in Zetism and Talia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I stayed with them, and because I've been playing with Zetism for like a very long time, and then um, and then I started playing with Talia too, and like on their streams and stuff. So they ended up being really good friends of mine. And then when Nat- Nationals came around, that's when they invited me down, and I could stay at their place. And that was so nice, man. That was so nice. They had yeah. like a small little apartment with like three kids, and they still made room for me, and they made sure I was comfortable. It was, it was such a cool feeling. Like it was unbelievable. I'm forever grateful for what they've done for me. Yeah, man. Are there any Yoshi Mitsu players that you look up to personally? Oh, number one, I'm musician. He he was the main inspiration. It's hard because when you say, it, like, he is the one guy, Yoshimitsu. Mm. He is literally the one guy. <laughs> yeah, man. There's, yeah. So he was definitely one. Like, um, because I saw him play, I saw him play Tekken Seven a while ago, and it was the first time I've seen that sort of gimmicky style play of Yoshimitsu come out. Because we've all seen like Kane and Trenches how they play quite solid and they're quite defensive and. They're not quite risky, and then you see I'm a musician, and he's on like he's in flea stance, and he's flying around the stage, and he's making it work. Mm. Which, it was unbelievable. It was like, whoa, yeah, man. And I and I got to mention, I think I think a little bit of national stuck with you because you mm. know I I would see your name more often pop up on like oh he's streaming and uh, he's yeah. he's labbing, um, and you made like some Yoshi like you made a Yoshimitsu compilation video or something kind oh, of that's like cool. uh, yeah kind of like similar to what is it masood you know that guy who loves to um impress main men a lot with his funny videos yeah i thought it was fun, yeah. I it was fun. <laughs> yeah i i don't know what i was thinking i i remember the reason why i made this was i was at home and i had a real bad man flu so i was like stuck in bed most of the time and i was watching a lot of like masood and um too mad too. He makes a lot of uh, like mean sort of content like this, but not for fighting games. And I just remember laughing my ass off, and I was like, oh, "I'll try and make this. I'll see what I can do." And what most people don't know is that I actually made it all on this phone right here. Oh, this on is, your phone. This is the editing device, <laughs> <laughs> and it was a nightmare. I didn't. I had no clue on how to edit videos. Um, I was just trying to splice things together, and it was a cool little thing. I learned a few things just by using the old phone here, but. 
I just uh, I don't think I'll ever make one like that ever yeah. anytime soon on this a PC because it was so draining. I, I, <laughs> I, I love the little things you added that made me th- oh, like, I know you've watched those kind of videos the the shooting crosshairs <laughs> the random explosion <laughs> when he does the, the float kick Jesus yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know what the heck I was on, but I had a lot of fun making it. Some people liked it, and uh, it, was, it was something different I thought I'd try on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can all be serious competing, but it's just, uh, we don't really have anyone in the scene that, that does these kind mm. of videos, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I wanted to try and make something like that, too, because lately I haven't really been as competitive as I, as I used to be. So I was like, oh, I'll try something different. Like, you know, I enjoy playing the game for fun. And I thought maybe making something like this would help express why I like playing the game so much. And it just it makes things more fun to watch too as well. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, even though Nationals, like, recently-ish got announced, I mean, there's a few of us that are still <laughs> in the chill mode, that are still in chill mode. We're not really yeah. practicing as much. And I think, like, COVID still being apparent to other places around the world. I don't know if it's it's made... Like it's it's been that it's it's been that change, but um, yeah, like we haven't really like maybe not now, but in the next few days, I know some of us will have to start like kick each other up the button, actually get some yeah. heavy, heavy practice in. Yeah, yeah, I've got to get some practice, and then I've been slacking on chicken <laughs> lately. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll, I'll bring it back to KI if that's cool, man. So, yep, were you yep. playing it back when it released? Um, I think it was like 2000 and forgive me, is it, two, it was like 2012. Yeah, 13, it was like it was kind of around 2012, 13 ish is what I think. I think it was yeah. September in 2013. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. It's been a while since I've remembered the release date. But um, no, it, it wasn't like I didn't play since day one. Like, that's a lie. So, yeah, I didn't play since day one. I, I started playing just after Fogel was released. So, which was a little, a little, maybe like a few, three or four months after the game release, I think is, that's when he came out. Yeah. And that's when I picked it up, but like, ever since KI got announced, I was watching like, every Maximilian clip that would come up with Killer Instinct. I was obsessed with the game, I would yeah. watch it 24-7. So, it was just something that really caught my eye. I thought it was just something so cool. I think, um, I think I if you're ever combo. going to mention Killer Instinct, or talking about the growth or the popularity... He he is that he is that guy, you know. Like, oh yes, definitely. Involved with the development team, really fueling that um, mm. that project. And I mean, considering with what's happening with COVID, the online, like maybe we didn't give it attention back then, but it mm. really, like the online, we really respect it now. Yeah. Than than we ever have, you know. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, like the Color Instinct netcode is insanely good. Like um. I was playing people from like USA and you you'd think that they're from New Zealand. It's it's that good. And I don't have the best connection as well. Like my 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 internet is like decent at best. So to be able to play like real crisp games for people over in like USA was is, was just something so good. Yeah. And I think people now are starting to realise how good the Killer Instinct netcode was and how get how good the game actually is. So I don't think it, it deserves a lot more attention than what it currently has also how it looks like you think of like <laughs> super street fighter 4 like mm-hmm. that look that game looks okay when you play it now but i mean for yep. what it, for what it is like killer instinct actually visually it, it looks all right you know mm. you play it 2020 it's all right yeah and they um when season three came out they actually re- redesigned all of the graphics and stuff so it, it looks better like all the stages look a bit better and it's more optimized for PC too, because that's when it came up for PC. I think it was during season three. So and like the game, like characters, like character design, um, sound design, character versatility, and just the overall graphics of the game were real good on release. Just like everything about Color Instinct just ticked my like box of approval that of a game I wanted to play. And yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> do you think um like an interesting challenge for Killer Instinct was when it came out, it was prior to Street Fighter 4. And, you know, having that big hype, a lot of, I mean, I'm not trying to discredit the Killer Instinct scene, but I think with the oh. legacy games like Street Fighter, we always, we, we know the champions of those games and maybe Killer yes. Instinct, not so much. Because it never really had a fair go when it, when it originally mm. started. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. KI didn't really have a lot of offline events and stuff prior to even when it was like quite popular. Um, so it was a bit, it was a bit hard. Online was normally the main way to play, which we didn't actually mind because the, the net code was crazy good. So yeah, thankfully for that, yeah, we we kind of just stuck online during around season one and two. Yeah, it did do the. I mean, it did do what we used to know as the season releases. So season one, I think it really had beer, you know, like Jago and Glacius yeah. and Orchid. Um, and then they did season two and three, and then they did um DLC characters. Um, do you, do you feel like? I guess what my question is: Do you feel like Ki did enough for its time, competing oh, yeah, yeah. against competing against the likes of Street Fighter? Yeah, 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 definitely. Like the KI team put in a lot of work, and I'm pretty sure sh- I'm I'm sure that they were like the very first game to implement this whole season one, season two, season three sort of idea that most fighting games follow along now. Um, but the thing about KI is that after season one, the original developers Double Helix, they Amazon ended up buying them out, I think, and then so they had to stop development. And then that's when another uh, development team, Iron Galaxy, the guys who currently own Killer Instinct, that's when they took over. And I feel like um, I just... It was definitely different. You notice the changes that Iron Galaxy have made and and like... I'm sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. No, no, go ahead. No, no, please. Please. (laughs) But like... um, I feel like... Double Helix was definitely a good... they definitely done a good job on release. You can see the difference between, like, the Double Helix characters, the Season 1 characters, and the Season 2 and 3. Like, the Season 1 characters are, are quite, like, footsie and, and, like, a normal sort of game plan you use with them. Like, if you play Wii, you could play Jago or Volgo or, you know, something, something like that if you ever came from Street Fighter. But if you tried the Season 2 characters, they started to become a lot more complex. They had a lot more weird tools that shook a lot of us. Kan Ra being a huge one, um, because he had all these things where you could put like these these traps all over the stage and and then you got Maya who was who's reliant on her daggers, so if she throws them, she has to go pick them up and without them she's not that good. She's pretty bad. Yeah. And yeah. For each season, could you pick a character that came out as one of the the most like the best i could you say all right season one definitely sadira um i'm calling it there she was crazy broken she had unbreakable combos and instinct high damage um super hard to catch because she was like the very first aerial sort of character that ki had made so she was and she was she was crazy good man she was crazy good in season one season two Easily Khan Ra, he was a nightmare. He was crazy good. He, oh, man, he, he's giving me PTSD nightmares just thinking about <laughs> it. <laughs> but when it comes to season three, I know Gargos was a bit broken. I can't believe I'm playing a top tier character, but <laughs> <laughs> Gargos was definitely broken on release. But they ended up patching him a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't say he was broken, but he was definitely much better than what he is now. Yeah. But. Oh, out of season three, mm, there's no one that really comes to mind. Yeah, I'd say Gargos in season three. Gargos, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> uh, have have there been any creators, um, any videos you've watched that's helped you level up as a Killer Instinct player? Um, so when I was uh, playing during season one and season two, I'd always watch a lot of Maximilian. Um, he was definitely one. Um, I'd also watch a lot of Twitch streamers like uh, Base Ultra Arcade Base. He was he's he's always been streaming, and he still does still streams Ki quite religiously too. Um, another guy was Emperor Menzo. He was another Twitch player that I always used to watch. Um, but yeah, the content creators for Ki was quite small. Yeah, back then. Um. Why, why do you think, like, I mean, I know the player base is small, but, like, it, it couldn't just, maybe it could have been just the lack of recognition, like, um, but then it, but then even then, like, um, a lot of players weren't making a lot of content around the games they were competing mm. in. 
Yeah. Like streaming, that was it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that was like the main thing. We didn't really have much much tournaments going on. Mm. We started to for a little bit, but then they kind of died off in the AUS scene. Yeah. Sorry. But they, they kind of died off in like the Oceania scene. Well, I was looking at their Twitch page, um, Killer Instinct. They were last active three years ago, which is quite su- <laughs> which is quite surprising. You know, I actually thought it would have been a, a longer period. Um, I think they might have been. I can't remember what their last broadcast was, but I know that they always. This was something I really liked about Ki was that they'd always release a character sort of monthly during throughout their season, but like just before they would release, they'll do a live stream and demonstrate what sort of moves they would have. So. That was something that was always handy. It was sort of like a character reveal and it was character reveal and a, um, what was the other thing they'd done? Character reveal and like an in-depth tutorial of their character as well was another thing that they would always do just before they would release one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in terms of the legacy, in terms of the like original characters, who do you think had the best uh, redesign? Ooh. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're right. Oh, okay. This is a hard one. Um, TJ Combo definitely has one of the craziest redesigns. He, gameplay wise, gameplay wise. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, he had one of the craziest redesigns and he was definitely super, super, in, like, insane gameplay. Like, if you played TJ back in KI two or KI one, you wouldn't be able to play him in season like in KI three. Like it's just, you'd have to go to the lab and learn some things and get used to his new stuff. So TJ was one. Maybe for like just overall looks sort of design, just like appearance of the character. Mm. I would say that Hmm. I would say Tusk, I really like Tusk. I like his redesign. He yep. looks, he looks bloody, looks so good. He doesn't look like a stereotypical dinosaur hunter looking thing <laughs> that he looked like in the PIT. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Tusk. Like I know a lot of people really won't understand it, despite how many times they've been told it. But the online for Killer Instinct, like we keep hearing yeah. that it's so good. Um, mm. What? What do you think has played a huge factor in that in, in that with its online? Um So you mean as in like netcode sort of? Yeah. Or oh, oh. um so yeah, the netcode was always a huge, huge factor. Like I I still remember playing Maximilian and playing um uh um uh Circa Nikki. I don't know what his thing is now. But he still goes under Nicky. He's he's another good full world player. So, and I would just all in all, I would say that like the Ki net code is what's kept the game alive, definitely. Yeah, because it's it's outstanding, and I, yeah, I can't stress enough how good it actually is. I know Maximilian is a is a full goal fanboy. So, how does he do mm. against Gargos? Do you, do you do you kick his ass or is it the other oh, one? Last time I played him, uh. Kilgore got released and it was like day one so he was playing on stream like day one sort of Kilgore gameplay because he just got released so I found him in ranked on accident <laughs> and my god it was so close he took the first game because when you play ranked in Killer Instinct if these are both high enough levels then it's actually a first to two best out of three sort of thing oh yeah yeah so he took the first game then i took the next only by a margin and then the last game he just took it by like that much man it was yeah i, I just wanted to hop on my bed and cry <laughs> <laughs> <Just wanted to. laughs> no fair enough so um yeah tell us about the australia new zealand scene so there's you um who are some mm-hmm. of the guys that are kind of rolling in yeah rolling in that okay so um for those who are unsure, we have a Discord, the um, Killer Instinct New Zealand AUS Discord server, and that's how we mainly all keep in touch. So there's a few of us, but um, there's definitely a few of us in there. There's still quite a lot of active players, and we have uh, players that are still, like, they're kind of average, like they're just learning the game, and that's cool too. They're, 
so they're not the best, but then we've also got some of like they call us the um the veterans. So <laughs> we've got <laughs> so we've got me, uh Vegemite, who's another dangerous player. Yeah. Pretty much wrecks me all the time. If you guys play Color Instinct in the AUS scene, you guys will know who Vegemite is. And then we've got Say No More, uh Lob Dog, um there's a few more veterans, uh, Hamzoid, or aka Mr. Copy. So there's, there's a good six of us that have been playing this game since it, it came out. But then there's also a whole bunch of people that are coming during the COVID sort of stuff, and they've been learning the game, and they've been getting crazy good too. Um, BD, the one being shown now, he's definitely one that's improved by a long shot. When we started playing for the first time, he wasn't that good. And then now he's he makes me sweat. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he gets the pits drenched. <laughs> <laughs> who's his um who's his character main? So he's a Glacius player. He's um stuck with him for quite a while now. Um but he, he's been a Glacius player and he was doing a lot of uh I would say, just in respect, I, I'm not disrespecting him. He, he probably knows this, but he was doing a lot of a, a lot of silly shit. Oh, yeah. sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to say. Oh, more than welcome to. More than welcome. Sorry, yeah. But yeah, he was doing a lot of crazy dumb shit that you didn't have to do. So, but like now, he's aware of it. He's playing a lot more smarter, and it's just been really cool just to watch him evolve from being um, shit tier to. And he's, he's kind of making his way up the ladder and he's giving me and us veterans a bit of a run for our money now. Yeah. Now, Delim yeah. Daddy, yeah, part of the day one yeah. gang. Those guys are That's Oz. the one. Um, how often do you guys have tournaments? Is it once Is it once a fortnight or once a month? Or So we normally have a tournament every, uh, at least once a month. Um, but uh, yeah, normally it's each month, but normally every Tuesday night each week, we have just sort of... Uh, just fun lobbies for for all of us so you yeah, normally tuesday night is lobby night and most of us will jump on and um yeah but every month we'll have a tournament yeah so um who uh so who do you str- who's your uh biggest demons um in this <sighs> killer instinct group okay vegemite have definitely won yeah, he he's been the bane of my existence ever since I started playing. He's always <laughs> like me. He's always been crazy good, man. It's unbelievable. Um, another fella is Mister Copy or Humzoid. Every bloody tournament, he beats me by that much. The last two have been so close. And I remember the last time we played, I messed up the combo, lost a set, and I fully just went. And I sat there in disappointment for so long, just like this, like. I was I was gutted. So Hamzor is definitely my personal demon at the moment. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what is it? Um. So, Delim. Um. So he's he's a player. He's a tournament host. Um, yes. I don't know. Have you ever thought about running your own um, Killer Instinct tournament stream? Yeah. Yeah. No. Um. I definitely have. It has definitely crossed my mind. But the only thing that's really stopped me from doing it is that if I was going to make a stream, I kind of I want to make it as good as I can do it. And to do that, I feel like I need a like a, a PC. I don't I don't want to be streaming off my console sort of thing. Where yeah. I, I want to have a face cam. I want to be able to have like the chat put up here. I want to be able to interact with the viewers. And I felt like that like doing it from console just limited all of those options. So yeah, but I have definitely thought about it, and I would like to do it in the future for yeah. sure. I know that expansion did the old Killer Instinct tournament. That must have been a joy mm. to see. Um, yeah, and if you play, you weren't even playing Gargos in those tournaments. At least, <laughs> at least what I saw. You were playing, um, you are playing Glacius half the time, man. What was happening there? <laughs> so um, when in, when expansion will t- uh, put out that they're playing a Killer Instinct tournament, it caught me off quite a lot because i was not expecting it like none of us at all yeah man yeah so i was like oh stuff it i'll sign up and this is when i actually first all of like everyone that's in like the killer instinct discord i had no clue that this was a thing so i was expecting like four players and then when i go to check the bracket again it's like 12 or 16 of us (laughs) so i was like wait what the hell like (laughs) am i missing something so i hopped in there i took the first game and then um, 
I normally never play my main first set. I normally never don't just to see how well I'll do. Yeah. Um. So I took the first game because I can actually play like pretty much the whole cast. So back then I I, I had like a character crisis. I didn't know who to pick. I always liked Gargos back then, but I never really put much time into him. So throughout the tournament, I was kind of picking and choosing which character I felt comfortable with. Yeah. Glacius was my old main. He he was my old main throughout season one and two. But... Yeah, because I was going to say he. Gargos season three, you wouldn't have had him in release, so yeah, you were rocking Glacius. So um everyone everyone knew me as like a as a Glacius player back then. And that was the character I always I still feel quite comfortable using, but as of now. Oh, everything alright? Oh, I think your camera's just frozen, man. Oh, oh shit. Hold on. No, no, uh, all good. Oh, there we go. Sweet. Oh, yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> um <laughs> that all good, all good. Um, so yeah, I'd use Glacius quite a lot. Such a cool character, and he was actually the first character I saw when Kel- when Killer Instinct got announced. So that's another reason why I picked yeah. him up. He's another effective uh, zoner as well. Like he can kind of yes. hit you from all distances. Yeah, yeah. So he's got the same sort of plan that Gargos can do. Um, he can do z- zone combos as well. He's one of the characters that can combo from full screen, and um. So I knew that if I played Gargo, so I'd feel pretty comfortable in that sort of full screen setup as well. Yeah. But I I, I personally feel like that Gargo is just easy mode Glacius sort of thing. Like I don't have to try too hard, and I've got more tools to work with because I like I like playing real complicated characters. Yeah. I know that now that we're all, that we can do off lines, maybe hosting a Killer Instinct tournament may not be on the cards. Um, but you definitely encourage that. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah, definitely. I'd love to see it more often, and I'm happy to help and do what I can, spread the awareness of the, of any tournament that's going to go down. Like, I always support the Killer Instinct. Like, I always back it up as much as I can. Because with all the other countries being in lockdown or in a lockdown situation, their Killer Instinct presence has grown a lot. Oh, yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely... It's gained the attention of us, of a lot more players. Like, a lot. Over in like USA, I've seen um, just even just by watching a few stream players, like a few streamers just overseas and stuff, I started to notice that there were a lot of like beginners jumping into ranked, and it was cool seeing them play because, like back then, you'd always you'd always normally find someone that was like maxed out ranked, maxed maxed out character level sort of thing. Yeah. So it was cool to see new people come and experience the game. It was definitely a shock. That's yeah. It was definitely a shock. How does the online work for Killer Instinct? I've seen you have like rankings, like gold, and there's like level mm. fifty. I've seen on your Gargos. How does that work with, in ranked? Oh, okay. So you, um, you have a similar style rank system that Tekken has, but not not completely. It's a bit different. So you've got like you've got four tiers. You've got your bronze, silver, gold, and then you've got your Killer tier. So you have to make your way up. Um, you can go up and down the tiers, but once you max out like a bronze rank, you get to the top, you win your promotion match, then you move on to the silver tier. Yeah. And you got to make your way up by winning, or if you like lose, then you lose points. So you got to make your way up. And then once you get to the top of the silver tier, you win your promotion match, you go to the gold tier, get to the top of that. And then when you hit your killer tier, that's where things start to change. So all of the killer players... Um, they all pretty much play ranked just to they get you get these things called a pro star and this little star next to your name and a number. Oh, when yeah, you get I've one of that. those, that means that like the end of the month you've been in top thirty two. So when you get in the top of top of thirty two before the month ends, then you get one of those stars and so yeah. Okay. But you can't you can't get demoted from your tier. If you hit gold, then you can't get demoted back to silver or something. Once you're in gold, you stay in gold. Oh, okay. Yeah, but those stars, those stars are where it's at. Do you have any anything like that for your rank? Oh, I used to. I used to on my old account, but as of now, I I don't have any stars. It, it <laughs> takes it, it takes so much time and so much effort. Yeah, um, and it's so easy to win points. Right? These points. Um, no, no, it's like just overall in the month where your placings are unranked. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like what it'll say like you can see in the loading screen where like the player information is and sort of stuff. It's normally yeah. on the right side. Oh right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. Here's an interesting thing because as I said, due to COVID, 
a lot more kill, like I'm seeing a lot more killer instinct um just being noticed in general being played a lot more um mm-hmm. I know that Eris made a video a month back it was titled Killer Instinct could have been the biggest fighting game if it wasn't an Xbox One launch exclusive mm-hmm. um yeah no I I, I yeah. want to hear your thoughts on that Yeah I'll I'll definitely agree with them there cuz Oh, well, actually, back then, you know, when PlayStation, Xbox, and this whole sort of FTC thing was coming about, I noticed that a lot of people didn't, like, as of now, you know how PlayStation 4 is the main go-to sort of thing for uh, fighting games. Mm. But, like, back then, that wasn't really the case, eh? Like, because PS4 didn't really have any exclusive fighting games at the time, I don't think. No, yeah, Street Fighter was multi-platform tekken Ooh. became multi tekken 6 yeah i was surprised by that um and it just <laughs> seemed weird to have a game that was xbox one exclusive, exclusive but pc compatibility back then you know people are scratching like really like yeah like, P- <laughs> like pc not console um but yeah i mean that was the Gosh. that was the standard um mm. and i did mention it before having to compete with that um anticipation for street fighter 4 there was no way it could have no way yeah. but it opens that question like do you think it could have been different if ki released a year before people got to experience yeah. people got to experience it people got to have that online experience and then actually think like mm. shit we could actually hold ki in a certain regard yeah 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 definitely i feel like that um you know people just had a little play on it because i noticed that some of the pros now I was watching like a documentary. It wasn't the whole back to block one. It was a different one. And I remember that there were some, there were three pro players. I can't remember their names. But there were three of them. And they said that they only got into Killer Instinct because it was free to play. So they had a little play around and then they got hooked on it just straight away. And now they're like some of the best like players out there. Yeah. So I, I, I think to myself that I wonder how much players. You know, if people just sat down, downloaded the game, played around on it, it's free to play if you just want to try it out. And um, I wonder who 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 else could have been been a part of the Ki family when it when it came out if they just sat down and played on it for like thirty minutes. Because that's the same way how I got sucked into it as well. Yeah. Like as soon as I started playing, I just see all these flashy things and these big combos, and the announcer was screaming in my face. I just thought it was the most hyped up game. The, honestly, <laughs> the announcer sells it for me. Um, mm. You know the ultra combo void. Fuck, yeah. that's so catchy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the announcer is crazy good. I can't remember the name of him, but he, oh man, it, it makes so much. It just makes so much of a big difference. Yeah. I also kind of mentioned like the players, how they're associated with the with the game. You have like Daigo, mm. Justin Wong for Street Fighter, Kudans, Nee yeah. for Tekken, for Killer Instinct. In your mind, who are some of the best players of of Killer Instinct? Um, Nikki being one of them, easily one of the best. Um, Sonic Dolphin was another player that I've seen. Wheels FGC, he was another Gargos player that I used to watch a lot. And not too long ago, um, another player named Devil May Care, he started a 3v3 sort of tournament of all of the real good Killer Instinct players. Yeah. And that was some of the best Killer Instinct I've seen in a long time because there were names that. I remember, but I haven't seen in such a long time because they normally don't stream or they just play for fun. And it was cool just seeing all of these big god names come up and they were going at it and they were all on teams. And it was unbelievable. It was, yeah. I was not expecting to see like all of these old veterans that used to scare the shit out of me and they still do. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like real daunting players and they all went at it. It was just, it was unbelievable, man. It was so good. Yeah. It's just, I, it's great that Killer Instinct is getting the attention it deserves, mm, but yeah. seven years later, I just, <laughs> it's a unique situation. And would it have happened if COVID didn't happen? You know, I, mm. yeah, people want good online and they found it in Killer Instinct, but they didn't realize till well after the fact. Mm, well, I, f- I feel like that, uh, yeah, COVID definitely helped. That was the main factor, I would say, easily. Because um, I remember talking on Discord and a lot of people were saying that, that they just started playing because they wanted to try something different and since they couldn't do much during COVID, that was the go, was just go try yeah. Killer Instinct since it was free to play and the next minute they're hooked. Yeah. So yeah, COVID has definitely helped out in a lot of sense of playing. Yeah, man. 
I'll just bring it back to, to Yoshi now. Um, mm-hmm. So I've already asked you who are some players that you look up to. Um, yeah. But what do you feel about his unique tools? You know, the tools that make him that unique character. So that's flea stance, copter stance, um, mm. sword sweep and flash. Do you feel like that makes him, that's why he is so irritating to verse? Yeah, definitely. I I, I, uh, I love abusing his stances. It, most people who play me know that I don't move around just by like sidestepping and stuff. I'll use every other way I can move around. So I do a lot of the spinner, spinneroos, even though I really shouldn't. It's like back three or back four. Mm. I do that a lot. Instead of backdashing, most of the time I'll just do this like cut handstand backflip sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> or instead of that, I'll just do his forward three plus four, but you can um, press back and he'll like completely just run the other direction, similar to like Heihachi's back back neutral two plus four. Yeah. How he does yell, ha ha! Yeah. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you fare against another Yoshimitsu player? How well are you at the mirror match? It's. It, it's real it's real fun it, it, it gets the brain thinking because you know that the the, the fine art of cheese is not gonna work so you gotta like out cheese your out it's cheese, a way yeah. of yeah. like i mean <laughs> i'm just like I, 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 I fucking hate dealing with my own shit you know what i mean like that's, <laughs> yes. it's like that's my utility i don't I don't need it back at me. So when it's Yoshi, it's just like you're both spinning around, you're both <laughs> flying over each other. It's like it's it's a circus, man. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's the Yoshi the Yoshi Yoshi matchup, and I think I hate about it the most is because when you're when you're in the mirror match, you got that mentality of thinking, all right. So whoever wins this is going to be the best Yoshi. I don't want to be. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want someone to be a better player than me with my own character, man. That is suck. So you got that mentality there, yeah. and it wears you down. You're like, oh my god, here comes the nerves, and <laughs> it's just. But yeah. um, gameplay wise, if you if you if you find another gimmicky Yoshi Mitsu like the sort of playstyle that I had, then it it turns into just a massive cheddar fest. Day. It's, there's cheese happening everywhere. It's, it's raining cheese. You'll see <laughs> most of the time, you're just, oh, look, he's gone on to flee. Oh, wait, what the hell is he doing now? What the hell are they both doing? They're spinning and they're cartwheeling. Yeah, and <laughs> pretty much, but, yeah. But in saying that, they both know what they're doing and it might look like nothing and it might just look some look like dumb shit that's just unfolding on the screen but most of the time they're trying to set something up man. it's that <laughs> saying i it's that saying i saw on a main man like it's 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 one of main man's clips that uh, one of his videos that he's named it's like a yoshi will die a genius or die a oh, yes. i was like oh, no offense but any yoshi yoshi mirror match that's that's what it is literally like yeah <laughs> yeah uh yeah i've seen that clip and, and yeah that's happened to me a lot I'll, i always go for harakiri to try and finish it off i but there have been a lot of times where i'm just shy and end up just stabbing myself and <laughs> end up losing yeah. <laughs> so we'll get into it very soon but for yoshimitsu what's one thing you want for him like what's one change you would warmly welcome oh one change, one change. There was something else. I was actually just thinking about this not too long ago. Um, oh, I would love to, for him to have sort of like a a stance rage drive to help him out because in a lot of them he is quite mm, like open. You, know, you jab me while I'm in flee, I get launched. So I'd like something that could make like a stance transition sort of safe if I feel like I'm uncomfortable being in flea, but if yeah. I, I don't want to press anything because I might get counter hit or something, then I'd like to do something that maybe like a rage drive sort of option he would have that'll just keep him safe and you can get back on your feet safe and get back in the neutral safely because yeah, I don't want to be yeah, I don't want to be uh um in and dragonfly when the opponent sees it coming and then I I get jabbed and get comboed. <laughs> yeah. How do you find his rate how do you find his rage counter you know the the other uh, that, that the rage. yeah because that has a unique property which i never knew until cornwallis cornwallis explained to me that the damage depending on if you hit them while you're standing or if you hit them mm. and you're in air the damage actually um does it changes slightly it, it changes yeah, like the scale of where it scales like it depends on what the move was like, yeah. um the um no i i like it i I feel like it's just a good panic tool. I panic a lot, so I, I do that sometimes. But um, 
if I feel uncomfortable flashing midstream, then I'll just throw that out. It's, it's a bad habit, but I've got a, yeah, it's just a bad habit. <laughs> so I use it a lot, but for, for bad reasons, yeah. but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Would you welcome a second rage drive, though? Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, with open arms. Because <laughs> yeah. I mess up his, uh, I always mess up his, uh, his input for his rage drive, like, a lot, and it gets me so tilted, like, all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's, it is, it's, it's, it's 14 it. frame, though, right? The, um, yeah, yeah. the slice. Fuck, it's good, man. It's got good yeah. reach, too. Yeah. And it's got, like, a bit of high crush as well, just a little bit high invincibility, I think. I don't know what the word the word is, but mm. you jab me while I do it, then sometimes Yoshi will duck under. Yeah. Crushing. Okay. So it's, it's, it is a good tool. But personally, for me, I always mess it up. I don't know why. I always just fuck it up. I try to go for it, and then I'll just do some some move. I'll just go. I'll do like what normally always happens. If I try and do that, and I mess up the input, I normally just get Yeshi yeah, would just go into raw flea, and then it just it, it fully fucks me over. Yeah, it's uh, I'm gonna get uploaded to a bloody fucking. I get wrecked. <laughs> yeah. hey, did you happen to catch the um, Japan roundtable thing that just happened? a few hours ago yes, yeah. yes I was just watching that yeah such a rare yeah. thing you know to have all these publishers mm. in, in, a, in, in a kind of web call and kind of talking about yeah. their own thoughts of, of the of the topics um, yeah and I love how Harada was being such a G man yeah <laughs> he's always <laughs> such a bloody theatrical sort of player eh? you, right. you can't <laughs> you can't hate the man he's just always so fun to watch and he's always bringing a bit of like excitement to the table I love watching him like every time you see him or even like doing like some of the announcements for like after work uh Tekken World Tour when they announced like fucking Ram and Gunry he like he made Michael say that he wasn't there so no yeah. announcement. And then out of nowhere, you just hear him say, I'm very angry. And he comes storming on stage <laughs> and he's telling everyone to shut up. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. No, nah, what a G, man. Like, yeah, not, ev- not everyone could be at this um, round table, but, you know, he had print up pictures to make sure that they were. That was funny, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, any, anything that surprised you from this uh, round table stream? Um, I was expecting a, another season installment. Um, that was definitely one, and but the ending because I love Kuni Mitsu, and I'm praying oh, that it's her. You, you, you're praying that it's her, eh? Yeah. I am praying. You're gonna do that? I, like, yeah, like if she comes back, then I'll be putting as much time as I used to in Tekken. It's just lately, it's just been Ki, and I haven't really been playing a lot of Tekken lately. So, but if she comes back, it was either her or Doctor B that would definitely bring me back because I used to like main those two religiously in Dark yeah. Tag too. So it's definitely cool, and I'm, I'm I just hope that it's Kunimitsu. If not, then sweet as you know, I'm still grateful for what the team is pushing out and giving us more content. Yeah, I personally think, I mean, it it kind of it has to be. There's only so many characters left that you could that you could that it could be unless it's a completely mm. new character. Um, but you know, you look at the signs like japan yeah. fighting game roundhouse table she's standing on a on a japan s type building yes, Ninja, yes. ninjutsu it's just it, it, it's got to be it's got to yeah. be her yeah it, it definitely gives off the, the aesthetic that it's kiri Butsu with the whole where she was standing yeah that, that's one thing and you see like the like the robes flying off that give her like that ninja look sort of thing as well yeah definitely and this is such yeah. a this is such a Harada like what a Harada announcement you know disappears off camera and then comes back like yo are you, are you ready? I, yeah, <laughs> I just I remember yeah Michael said that um he's like oh where's Harada gone <laughs> like he's just disappeared and then he just shows up full screen <laughs> and then he starts vacuuming his room <laughs> yeah. I mean, new moves is good and everything. I love that they're going to change the online net play. If they can tell yep. us if someone's playing on Wi-Fi, that would be a godsend. Yeah, that's um, huge. And if they could just gamble, adjust the quality of life for certain characters, bring them down to Middle Earth, mm. that'd be great. And I'm not labeling any any character in, in specific. Um, but yeah, I know there's some characters that they really need to be yeah. brought down. Yeah. Oh please, yeah, it's no, got to be good. It has I to be. It. It's, it's got to be. be. Like, if it's not, I will, I, I will cry. Yeah. <laughs> I will cry. <laughs> but you um, know, there were some really cool things that came from this 
stream um, and learning certain things that maybe as a player you don't really get to um, look into and analyze as much. Like they were saying how character usage and popularity aren't the same thing. Pro players will use a character that's really strong, but that doesn't mean that they're popular. Like there were some really cool things that came, that were really some cool things that came out of it. Um, like, like um, yeah, there were definitely... There were things in there that I wasn't expecting. Like I wasn't expecting them to talk about yeah the character popularity and usage being two different things. And I remember them they were, they were talking about like uh, something about was it crossplay was was yeah what they were talking about. And I think I was watching Maximilian at the same time, and he was he pointed out that it's, it's there's things that they got to consider like is a sixty hertz player allowed versus someone with one hundred and forty hertz or something like that. I don't really understand like. PC sort of terminology, but it definitely sounds. It sounds like that you know, if you're versing someone on the console on a PC, then you might already have like an unfair advantage sort of thing. Mm. So, all in all, he was pretty much saying there's got to be a way to to um to even out some of the odds that PC players might have against PS4 players or Xbox players because better hardware, you know, you can see things better, more clearly. Yeah, and it's just little things like that, different operating systems. So there's a lot to take in than just saying pair me with a PC player yeah. or a developer standpoint. Yeah, yeah, because it's yeah, it's not their service. They've got to outsource mm. and pay. Um, that was interesting as well. Like if you've got a PC player or a PlayStation Four or an Xbox, like you've got to pay for that server. You've got to pay for that yes. to exist. So you link up this ID with that ID, um, mm. and free games that are online. Like obviously they're going to get a lot of traffic, but they can control that traffic compared to if you make it cross-platform. And like there was just some, there was some good notes, and they were talking about having that maybe doing it again, um, which mm. is great, you know, because that's one thing we always love is to hear from the developers, to hear from the publishers about what's happening in the cycle. Yeah, yeah, because um, it, it definitely opened my eyes. Like there was a lot of things that made me go, "Oh wait, there is a reason why developers do this, or why are they doing this?" And now it, it's opened my eyes to, I've got more of an understanding on why things are so challenging for developers. And it was interesting to see how they were talking, sort of tackle sort of certain situations. Yeah, that, that'd be the right way to put it. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just good, you know, because it's like they're actually answering some of the things that we've been griping about for years and years. But then ultimately it'll come down to if that will come to pass. And I, mm. you know, and I mean, like from the announcement that we're given, I can safely say that we're all kind of feeling a bit content. You know, maybe mm. some of us a week or so later, you know, not saying any capcom you know like yeah. their announcements comes out maybe you know like it's not just characters it's like there's other stuff that people want to improve but i mean it, it, it's good it gave us a bit it gave us a, a clearer idea yeah you definitely yeah. definitely helped out with a lot of like insight and um stuff like that because yeah, like i said before the things that they were explaining were things that i would never think of so it's definitely opened my eyes and it was a cool different sort of perspective to see things yeah man well, if you're ready, I'm going to take you to the final round questions. So you're good? Okay. Yep. Sweet, man. So the first one, who is your favorite voice actor in video games? Oh! <laughs> Kratos, God of War 4, the guy who plays that, he, ah, uh, he is. It's got to oh, be him. Yeah, epic, man. He's That's epic voice. Man. Has he done anything else that you like? Is that, um, I don't think so. I think that might have been the first time I've heard of him. Yeah, I think that's the first time I've heard of them. Okay. All right. Suggest a character in Killer Instinct that should have a shadow version, and why? Ooh, 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 ah, uh, ooh, damn. <laughs> God damn. Um, a shadow version? Shadow Jago was pretty sick, so, like, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Hmm. Um. I would love to see like a shadow cinder. That'll be bloody cool to see. Shadow, shadow cinder. cinder, just like mm. black fire and stuff. Yeah, and just yeah. a whole more flashy moveset because he's already, he's already a flashy character. So how else are they gonna make him like treat more good? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fun to see what they could do. All right. Name a good holiday spot to relax and unwind. Oh man, oh, my bloody. My house, man, I, I don't know. Oh, hopefully this is still going, but I live yeah. in like the middle of nowhere. So 
like home for me, like no other place in the far north of New Zealand. Far north. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Kunimitsu or Master Raven? Ah, oh, Kunimitsu, hundred percent, all the way. Yeah, both yeah. ties to Yoshimitsu. Uh, one's a faithful, well, no, one's a unfaithful student, and the other is a uh, yeah, a can uh, well, just like a rival. Sort yeah, of, I think. Yeah. Okay. Both, both awesome characters. Both, yeah. both awesome. What's one thing you never learned in school, but you wish schools would teach now? Oh man, how to pay, how to set up my tax? Like God, this, <laughs> I totally agree with you, man. That's my, that's my one too. Fuck, that how to pay helped. bills? Yeah. <laughs> I don't like. Oh, that was just like when I got my first job, and I was looking like the application sheet. I was just, what the hell is half of this shit? They never taught me this in school. Yeah, like, man. Tax code. What is it? Bro, I agree, man. Fuck, it's like I don't, want, I don't want to write an essay on the Handmaid's Tale. Just tell me what my fucking tax code is. <laughs> it was my tax code. I'm like, what the hell is an IRD number? Yeah. <laughs> All right, complete the sentence. Yoshimitsu, the one that. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Yoshimitsu, the one that gets in people's heads. Yeah. Yes. Nice, nice, man. Name a player in the Killer Instinct ANZ scene that fits the title Rare Talent. Ooh, Rare Talent? I'm going to have to... Name a, it's it's going to have to be Vegemite. It's, cause it's the only fighting game he plays, but he plays like he's he's played fighting games his whole life. And it's the only one, and it's the first one he's played. And he's um, it's crazy how good he is. Yeah. So yeah, he's definitely some Rare Talent. Fair to say he likes Vegemite too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah he does yeah, well, come over here man come over to New Zealand yeah. you'll never run out yeah. describe your version of the breakfast of champions ooh breakfast of champions yeah what's your breakfast of champions <laughs> steak and chips New Zealand classic or you go for something more oh when I was working on a dairy farm the thing we always used to call Breakfast of Champions with a cigarette, a steak and cheese pie, and a blue <laughs> <bee. laughs> All the time, we'd see someone would be like, "Hey, Breakfast of Champions!" Oh, that's so, that's, that was, that's upsetting, man. <laughs> breakfast of Champions, God. Nah, hey, I mean, hey, if it makes you feel like a king, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> gives you what you need. Yeah. Does Killer Instinct deserve a new installment? Yes, a hundred percent. It definitely does. Needs new one. Yeah. What we currently have is still so much fun, but yeah, with with um, it needs a second chance. Yeah, it's kind of gotten its second chance through COVID, but um, mm. it yeah, it needs a bit more of a push. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it kind of flew under the radar of a lot of uh, fighting game players on release, and it still kind of is flying under the radar. So it'll be cool to see another installment come out and hopefully that'll take the game somewhere in the future. And lastly, man, who is your waifu, Anu? <laughs> uh, Dr. B, let's go! <laughs> <laughs> no. Don't, don't oh. say that. Don't, don't tell me that's not the answer. <laughs> please tell me that's not. I take that back. Please, please, I take that back. Um... <laughs> My waifu? God, you got you have to hit me with this question. Eh? It doesn't have to be uh, a fighting game character. It can be any waifu. But you know, you play fighting games, so it's it might naturally be a fighting game character. But yeah. Ah. <laughs> mm, uh, oh man, it's just it's gonna have to be Kuni Mitsu. Oh dear. <laughs> oh yeah. No. <laughs> Yeah, ninja. Yeah, any anything anything specific that makes that uh, like why it's Kunimitsu? Oh, but uh, no, nah, nothing really. Like, nah, just I, I, I just I just think the characters is cool and yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> I don't really have an explanation. No, 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 that's sweet, man. Well, thanks again, Anu. Um, do you have any last words or shoutouts? Um, I want to give a shout out to the Killer Instinct Discord community. Um, 
yeah, they've, they've been a big help in keeping the game alive in our little region. So it's been awesome playing with them and uh, getting to know them and obviously watching them become from decent to really good. It's been unbelievably cool to see them improve. Um, another big shout out I want to give is to Talia and uh, James, aka NZism, because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be on this podcast. Uh, the NZFGC wouldn't know who I was and because they 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 were the guys that introduced me to locals and and um, to have three kids and still look after me when I came down was was unbelievably kind of them. So I'm forever grateful for what they've done. They're another good bunch that I'd love to shout out. That's sweet. Man. And so that's about it. No, that's cool. Thank you again so much, man. No, oh, man. Thank you for having me. It's been <laughs> I enjoyed everything and love it. No, that's cool, man. Hey, take it easy. You too. Cheers.